there's a lot of surprises that have to do with her character, I think, throughout the season. Uh, I play a guy named Tucker Reed. Um, I think that's my last name. Yes. I, think so. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> I've never said my last name on the show, so. I just heard. I mean, I, anyway, I think. I think it's Chris. I think he's Tucker. Reed. Tucker. Yeah, he's definitely Tucker. <laughs> um, and, oh, yeah, Tucker Reed. Tucker yeah, Reed. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah. Paul. Yeah. Um, I, it's, uh, I can't say much, but he's a, a novelist. Um, um, I don't want to give away too much. Uh, he's also a part of the Sleeping Beauty storyline. Uh, he's a guy who um, has a seemingly perfect life to a degree. He has a beautiful fiance, uh, but he harbors some really dark uh, secrets and has a lot of um, uh, lot, lot of turmoil going on inside. And um, I, I think um, I'm being intentionally ambiguous because I, I really want the audience, and I think everyone wants the audience to sort of experience uh, those secrets on, as they unfold, uh, as opposed to me just. Spilling the beans. <laughs> that makes sense. How is it shifting from like you guys did like the Grim Brothers fairy tales in the first season, so now it's more Disney princess, but it's with a dark twist. So how is that switch? How do you guys enjoy doing that? Because you guys are both in the first season too. So. I wouldn't say that there's much of a switch in the way that the stories are, like, they're equally as dark and, um, and I guess our, our job as actors is to get to get a new script and find the character and play with it. So I think, I think, you know, we're definitely in a different city, we're in a different world that we're getting to play in and we're playing different people, which makes it a blast for us too. So that's, and I, I love that the fact this year is kind of the princess theme. Yeah, I think we get, we're going to see a really dark version of the princess stories we grew up with, so it's super fun. Yeah, I, um, yeah, you say, you hear princess and it's a little, you know, it seems light, but it's, uh, it's pretty dark and, and, uh, yeah, and, um, I, I mean, for me, selfishly as an actor, I feel like I have a much juicier role this year. I, I really enjoyed my character last year, but I felt, um, he was very supporting, and so, um, I, I feel like I have a real clear, uh, arc, um, and, um, yeah, I mean, I like that it takes place in the real world. Again, you know, I think what what I like about telling me a story is that it's not there's nothing supernatural. It's purely um, it's the, the, the archetype of the, the prince, the, the princess theme. But it's not. It's just the real world, you know. And it's so real stakes. You know. Can can we expect any connections with the past season? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Completely new yeah. cast. And, it, it, it looks uh, different. See, it looks different. It looks, feels yeah. different. You'll see the people. trailer. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it feels it feels. Well, we it's play very new different. people too. So yeah. that's that's an, I guess a big component to it. Because I mean, there's no reference to yeah. season one at all. Okay. Yeah, different city. Yeah. You could watch just season two, and it's yeah. a different different story. Yeah. I don't like that filming of like an anthology based series versus like a series like Grand Daughters who continues on, and you kind of have to know all the history of it. It's awesome. I mean, like what he was saying. With like liking this character because it's different from the last one, like that's what we want as an actor. It's so cool getting to, to play something different, and it keeps it fresh for us too. So we're yeah. playing on the same show, but it's, a, it's a, it feels like a different show because yeah. we're I mean, we're even in a different city. Yeah. yeah, I mean every show kind of like from my experience, even just as a viewer. But uh, you know, uh, for example, uh, the show I was on for eight years. Like after a few years, it sort of starts to maybe repeat itself. It's not as fresh. It's not as exciting. Lighting. It's comfortable. Yeah, yeah and and I mean naturally after 40, 50 episodes, you know, it's like of course things are gonna start to fall off a little, and that's any show, you know, whatever critically acclaimed. Um, so it's nice to be able to, re you know, just have a fresh start. Yeah, um, I love that that kind of uh, like American Horror is the same, similar. They have the same yeah. actors but different characters and kind right. of re seeing that char that actor in a different. Yeah. Like personality yeah. almost. Yeah. So I'm actually excited to see how you're going to be in the new season. I mean, yeah, I'm, excited for you to see. I'm excited to see it as well. I, haven't <laughs> seen it anyway. I hope it's good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 
Ooh, it's hard to say, right? Like, yeah. I, well, our storyline's pretty. Our, ours is very dark. <laughs> our our storyline's pretty. I this is know. darker for me than last season. I don't know. I think it is for you, too. I, it definitely it mm-hmm. is for you, too. For, for sure. me, it is, yeah. It's no, fun getting sure. to work with him this year. Yeah. Terrible to need to see as his face in the morning. He's like not a morning person. But like, <laughs> no, but it's it's a lot of fun. I've been having a blast working with him, so it's been it's been really good. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, I I echo that. Danielle's really killing it this year. Um, surprises me all the time, and it's uh, it's great. It's, it's fun, fun to work on. To switch it up too. Totally. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's really cool. Great, thank you. <laughs> They're like, we don't want. Nashville is known for its musical background. How would you feel about a musical episode? <laughs> it would be inappropriate. It work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious what kind of song would play if it was in a musical in, in our in the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never. They do musical episodes of uh, TV shows, like a lot. really. Yes. What's like a what's like a a very dramatic show that did a, a musical uh, episode? American Horror Story. Did, did they one. do a musical yeah. episode? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Orange is the New Black did one. Yeah. Which one? Orange is the New Black did a they musical, did a musical? One. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Like, Honestly, season I would six or not seven. have expected. I wouldn't either. It was kind of strange, but it broke but out. Those are kind of comedies. Well, not American Horror, but like Orange is the New Black is a comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it just kind of went out of nowhere. Yeah, that's, that's so interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for being here. So, what can we expect from this new season? What can you tell us? Well, what is everyone else telling you? You know, we're doing the fairy tales that all with all the princesses this year. Yes. We're doing Cinderella, Beauty and the Beast, and Sleeping Beauty. And I don't know. We just wanted to thematically pull all those storylines together because they all have sort of you know we all know what the themes are. We all know what the, they're very well known because of the Disney. They're very Disney esque, and so they seem like a really good um, three to sort of put together and sort of you know, um, mix up the tropes and sort of mix up the characters and mix up the themes and sort of tell a dark, twisted version of all of these sort of fairy tales that we all know and love. And also at the same time, do them in a way in which maybe we haven't seen yet. You know, like, you know, in Beauty and the Beast, we've never seen a female beast, really. It's, all, it's always a man. And, and you know, and what does beauty mean in Beauty and the Beast? It means... Um, you know, finding your inner beauty from inside. But in our case, you know, we, we have a character who finds her strength. And her beauty is her strength. She, you know, it's all the metaphor. And how her beauty is defined as her power. And how she becomes a survivor against all, all these horrible odds. When, when life hands her a really horrible situation, we sort of watch her stumble. And then we watch her pick herself up and find her strength and her power. And she becomes a warrior and a champion for life. And she and she sort of... It's, it's, a, it's sort of a beautiful story about it. You know, it's a, it's, it's not the beast we're used to seeing, and so it's a, it's more of a you know she, how she this young character empowers herself and sort of uh, recognizes those around her to sort of you know overcome. I know it's kind of cool. I, I, the writers in the room, I was really hesitant about it, and the, the, I have a whole room full of female writers. They're like, no, we're doing a female beast, and that's it. I'm like, yeah, but we can't do. It. And, and I kept coming up with all these reasons. And they're like, no, we're doing it, and I was like, okay, we're doing it. So, <laughs> And we have this amazing actress over there. She's so good, and she sings. She plays like this young Taylor Swift on the on the verge of becoming Taylor Swift. Maybe is that why it's in Nashville? Yeah. She's not, okay. And this year we learned a lot from last year. We had a really hard time doing these three storylines, and they were all sort of separate. And it was really kind of hard for one hour to care about a lot of. You know, it's like you you don't get to live with one character for very long. Mm-hmm. Keep jumping around three storylines, so many characters. It's hard to meet everybody and get to know everyone and invest. So this year we're doing one family. Okay. And all the storylines jut out from that one family. And so so you have um, Natalie, Matt Laria, um, and Odette, Annabelle are all brothers and sisters and Carrie Moss is the okay. matriarch. She's sort okay. of the mother. And she's a little bit of the momager of this young girl. And so she's trying to get her career off the ground and she's got her first album and something horrible happens to her. And we sort of, and, and then it watches how she survives it and how she overcomes it. And, and she just may get the guy. 
if she chooses. It premieres in the fall, in the December fifth. Oh, because the other one premiered on Halloween. So <laughs> well, we got a late start because okay. we had availability issues, yeah. and we had to move to Nashville because we were in New York. And yeah. So it was all uh, shot uh, based in Nashville, filmed in Nashville. Everything is. Okay. Oh yeah, we're filming right now. There, and that's I think why Matt Laurie is not here. He's Perfect. filming. He's working today. Okay. And uh, we we don't have Cinderella. We, we have Cinderella and Prince Charming that aren't here today. Okay. But the rest are. We have an amazing Cinderella, and every 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 storyline is filmed differently. Like Cinderella is sort of this reddish film noir, mm -hmm. and then we have Beauty and the Beast, which is this gothic romance, mm -hmm. and then we have Sleeping Beauty, which is just sort of this kind of cool, dark, gritty thriller. But that's with uh, Paul Wesley is our Sleeping yeah. Beauty. <laughs> They kind of redid like the, the fairy tales and the Disney kind of like Once Upon a Time, which was like a long running show. So it's kind of a different take on that storyline. But your series is like an anthology, which is just taking the different fairy tales and kind of shooting them in their own storyline. And each season, I guess, is going to be different characters and different storylines. Is that um, something you thought about when you, when, for, so I think it's a first an Argentinian yes, show as well. Yes, uh, it's based on an Argentinian series. And one of the great things about it is it's so, it's, Once Upon a Time, I thought was, is aimed more network, it was aimed for more family fare, mm -hmm. and we're a little darker than that. We're yeah, much darker, much than darker. That. We're a little more R rated, and um, and we get it was much more adult. Mm -hmm. And sleeping, like for instance, Sleeping Beauty. Well, what I love about it, Cinderella is all about transformation. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about how she changes and she prospers. And as you're watching the show, and it's ten episodes, halfway through, you're like, wait a second, is she really Cinderella? It might be him. Ah. Who's really in need of changing? Okay. Because he's going to have to change him. He's going to get her. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, and then they both end up changing each other. And, you know, so it's one of the, so it's sort of, a, that's, and so we take the theme of transformation, which I think was so beautiful, which resonates with everyone. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and, it, and, who, and with Beauty and the Beast, it's all about, you know, you know, uh, life always hits a, you know, there's not a person alive that doesn't have life hit him in the face. Mm -hmm. And how do you stand up and rise up and, be, and and redefine yourself? And how do you create a next, when, 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 when no one's writing your story, you have to write it yourself. Mm -hmm. What's the next chapter? And how this one character rises up and and, and, and she stares her fate in the face and she, she says, no, I'm going to do this. And we watch a determined young woman, you know. Figure it all out, yeah. and that's what I like about it. She's really she can sing her butt off. She does all of her own singing, and we shot a music video, and she's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Hey, talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> and there's her bow. Because bow in French means beautiful. That's the, he plays the bow. Oh, it's exciting! I'm I'm excited for this. New it's season, good. We so. kind of do like um, a bodyguard, my bodyguard. Uh, uh, version of Beauty and the Beast, okay. where he's pretty, you know he's hired to protect. He's, her, he's, he's part of her security detail, mm -hmm. and uh, and they have an unlikely friendship that turns into something more. So, cool. They're really good. They have great yeah. chemistry together. I just <laughs> he's, it's uh, he's mean and he's rude and he hits me <laughs> and I do whatever he says or he'll hit me. <laughs> and that's Carrie's. She's really Thanks cool. so much, everyone. Thank you. No, he's, it's awesome. He's like family. I mean, I know him this. I've known him for so long. And Danielle too. They're from, you know, they're all just my family now. Kevin? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. That's my boss. <laughs> All great things. Oh, great. Good to hear. Are we going to have music? Music? Well, I don't know. You guys got a guitar? <laughs> There's a head one. Oh, perfect. Oh, wow. I'm going on there. <laughs> uh, so, guys, uh, hey, guys. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, Ashley Rose, I think that Kevin was kind of telling you, she, uh, she's a pop star, um, and she's kind of just going through life. Uh, she just has an album that, that is being released, so she's kind of at like the peak of her career, just uh, really doing successful. And then um, she gets into this accident. Accident. Don't know how much you can say about that, uh, but she is... Um, she kind of has to take on life with this 
I don't want to say. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I would, like me to call me. Uh, she just kind of has to go through life, um, kind of changing her mindset and like, creating a different motive for who she wants to be and realizing that beauty is nothing compared to the person that's inside. Yeah. Um, Bo Morris is. Uh, He's got the demeanor of a marine. He's a hard dude. He's been through some shit. He grew up in a, in a tough area with, with a single dad and uh, as his main figure. And but he's all heart. He's all love. And uh, it's this kind of dance that he has to go through with uh, where his morals and ethical code kind of get questioned and really pushed, and he has to make some really tough decisions about. Uh, doing what is right and doing what is necessary and having his personal and professional life all up in his face as a result of that and kind of dealing with the fallout. <laughs> so look, uh, Beauty and Beast is a classic story where the Beast is the male character yeah. and the Beauty is the female character, but swapped, I know, in this, or read about it, swapped in this storyline. So how did you kind of tackle that and what do you think about that, of that role change, I guess? Oh, I think it's so cool. I mean... There's so many storylines that I feel like there's no reason that it shouldn't be swapped. Um, and kind of, I mean, I grew up reading Beauty and the Beast used to be my favorite, like, favorite fairy tale. So I never thought as, like, a young girl that I'd be the one playing the Beast. I never thought I'd be involved with anything Beauty and the Beast. And that was also really cool. But um, just taking away generalizations and creating, putting a new twist on it, I think that that's something that a lot of shows should be doing. And I'm really proud to be a part of one that is. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's really interesting to us as, like, a black and be I think it's really cool and, so and look how beautiful he is. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect casting. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think that like element is really interesting and then to me also of having a woman play the beast and just what's happening now in our zeitgeist with the female rage and very deserved rage coming out, I think it's really fucking important to play with and, um, and I think she does a great job of working on writing that out of the so I mean, it's, it's, it's still a killer side of time, but there are these kind of other current themes that are woven through in, in ways that you know, the viewer chooses to see it that way, then they can, they can feel connected to I think it's also really cool because I think that young people, especially young people watching this show, so many people are focused on outside beauty and having the beast as a woman showing that you don't need physicalities to be beautiful, I think that that's a really important message that we're trying to get across. It's the original message in the fairy tale. Um, but I feel like our show's doing a really cool way of doing it, especially because it is a woman and women are so worried about their looks, so it's really not that important. Yes. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's actually, when I read about that, it was really interesting and really great that they did that. Yeah, it's show. super empowering and um, it's been really, really, really cool. Very fun. Very fun. So it's good. Did you watch uh, season one? Yeah. yeah. What did you think about it? I loved it. Yeah, I thought it was really, like, it drew me in immediately. I thought everybody did fantastic work. I was genuinely surprised by, like, the different takes on these different story tales that were, like, so... Um, so modernized and so yeah, I, I, I really really enjoyed it actually. It's actually why I jumped on this one. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> was it your first time singing on a show? Singing on a show because you sang first. Yeah, no, it's my first time singing. It's definitely not something that I, I like professionally do. Rocks it. Thank you, but I, know, I was like when I was going into it, they're like, okay. Um, like, can you sing? I was like, I guess. <laughs> so then it's kind of been just, uh, when I'm not working, I'm like in the studio recording, so it just adds a completely different element to my character, which is completely different. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been really great. Would you be down to do a musical episode? A musical episode? Oh, well, we kind of have a music, like kind of, we have a little music in our episodes. Um, <laughs> No, I don't know if it really fits in I this season. Love to I think oh, it'd be I'm really sure fun. Love to do yeah. <laughs> I think that'd be really confusing to like blend into this. <laughs> like, wait, wait, what just happened? <laughs> but why? Yeah. <laughs> we had to pitch CBS episode 11. Just like the Here's Little Twist. The 10 months later, how everybody's doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there a fairy tale that you want to see? If there's another season that you maybe you also want to be involved in? 
Because there's been three never, and then three in this one, right? Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, I, like, I'm a huge advocate for Indigenous rights, and, and I think it would be really interesting to see a more European fairy tale. There are so many incredible stories that haven't been tapped uh, that are dealing with the same universal underlying human themes as fairy tales do and uh, really like the originals they they come from like pagan stories and just like pre-Christian um, mythology which it's the parables the teaching tools for young children often. And so there's often like really dark undertones in there to try and get across strong messages and I think some of the indigenous stories are um, so powerful and so beautiful and teach really relevant shit for the planet that's currently being destroyed by this culture. Season, <laughs> next season. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll pitch it to Kevin. <laughs> well, he loves you too, so I think you can pitch it to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How different is it to uh, work in an anthology rather than a regular TV show? Um, I, I think it's completely different because you kind of have the thought process of knowing where you want the show to start and knowing where you want the show to end and really fitting in the character and knowing that, hey, this is what I'm going to give you and you're going to figure out exactly who I am in this time frame. When you're working on series that you're not positive how far it's going to go, you kind of have to drag out your character. Um, but for this, it's really like you get the storyline and you don't have to worry about the next season which was really cool for season one for me because I was like it sucks when you have to wait for another season and you're like oh my gosh um, but no and it's been it's been really cool working on this because I mean Kevin doesn't really tell us where the show's going to end but you kind of have the idea of it um, so yeah yeah I, I, for me it's like the best of both worlds because having done a ton of television I love television the thing that I love most about is that you get this 13 hours often or more to really tell the story of the character and do all the development and stuff and you really kind of get to know these people and on film the best thing is that you have a beginning, middle and end I can plot out my art and know exactly what the beats are that I need to hit in order to make that art work in anthology I get 10 hours to do a movie basically and, and so it's, it's really kind of ideal and then I'm free in the same period of time that we've got to take to do it um, to go and evolve into whatever the next project or role is that I want. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. Today we saw you on the cool shirts last night. Thank together. you so much. <laughs> it's so funny because you're, you know, this is such a dark show. I know. And it's so different. So, well, I went back and did that episode and I just jumped on a plane from doing this and I got there. I'm like, Wait, that oh, thing that you did is already there. Yeah, yeah, it was on last night. <laughs> But I literally just like got out. I was like, "Hey, okay, I'm like here. Like I had so much blood all over my ears and stuff." They're like, "Oh God, we gotta get rid of this. <laughs> this is not the vibe." I was thinking about that. I was like, "I wonder if he was filming that." I literally filmed on. I th- filmed on Thursday night. Jumped on a red eye. Filmed Goldberg. Yeah, it was fun though. It was nice to have you back. Thank you. I'll be back this evening. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> uh, so, uh, can you tell us a bit about your characters? Uh, sure, yes. Uh, I play Madison Pruitt. I am one of three siblings um, that uh, this family dynamic that we have. Um, Carrie Ann plays my mother, and um, she's a matriarch of our family. We sort of anchor the whole show. I'm the middle child, and I am engaged to Wesley's character, so my storyline um, really uh, mostly involves the Sleeping Beauty storyline, but I'm also, um, you know, because I'm one of the siblings, I'm also involved in Beauty and the Beast and Cinderella, so I'm a little bit everywhere. I'm sprinkled to all throughout. <laughs> I'm the mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm the middle child. <laughs> uh, you both come from the from superheroes TV shows. Uh, how is it different to to shoot something so dark? I love your whole situation of <laughs> color. The color palette. It's so speaking to me right now. It's so vibrant. Um, say that again. I got lost. I got lost. 
so beautiful. Uh, you both come from uh, Superheroes TV show because you were on Supergirl and you were on uh, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist. Uh, how is it different from something so dark? Like, tell me a story. Uh, the real difference for me is that, um, you know, I get to really be human and get to have real conversations and I get to play a, a, a daughter and I um, and, and a sibling and I get to feel the, the, the weight of what being a human is. And you'll see so much revealed throughout the uh, season with Maddie um, specifically because at first you meet her and she's seemingly has this perfect life and, and, and then you quickly realize that it's not always what it seems. So that's cool, but I also really enjoyed being a badass. <laughs> not gonna lie, who wouldn't? What drew you to the characters when you first like read the script or came on board to the show, to the series? I think we both agree that Kevin Williamson um, was the big draw. Mm -hmm. uh, I love fairy tales. I love anything being told in a dark way. <laughs> um, or even just in a, in a, in a modern way. Mm -hmm. uh, I love working with Carrie Ann. I think she's fantastic. Um, I think my best work on this show are scenes that I get to do with you. Um, I'm super grateful. Yeah, I think Kevin Williams for sure. Yeah. And the script, of course, and just the concept. Mm -hmm. It's been really... Um, we're only half, I think we're more than halfway through. Okay. So, you know, when you sign on for something like this, you just, all you know is the first script mm -hmm. and then talking to Kevin. I was excited about doing it. I love that it's 10 episodes. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and you're not left in like limbo of like, is it going to get picked up? Like, I, I hate that part of TV. I mean, I accept that's part of TV, but it can be hard to plan your life, and I have three children, and so, you know, we've been saying, people have been asking, like, why do you pick things? And I think that. It's like really demystifying, like why big actors pick things. Like there's so many different elements, yeah. you know. You've been home for a few months and you're aching to go to work, or you know, you have a window of time, or you know, maybe there's one part of the character that you're actually just really spoke to you that you're dealing with in your own life. I mean. I've gotten movies before where literally I've been like interested in the idea and then suddenly I've gotten a script and I'm like, I have to do it. Like, yeah. There's The universe is at play. Like I believe in, in that bigger picture than just me picking yeah. things. I'm very open to having an experience. Mm -hmm. So uh, would you say that this show is about finding your true self in this movie? I think that this show doesn't allow for it to be any other way. I think the cards will be shown whether you want it or not. You know, it's like you can't always get what you want, but you get what you need. And that's what a great. <laughs> I just came up with that. Right, so I know. <laughs> You say you love fairy tales, and there's already three. Did you see season one of the show, yeah. prior to, and then there's three more in this season mm -hmm. coming up. Is there one that you kind of want to have in another season, and would you be interested in being part of another season for another story of a fairy tale that they're going to portray that they haven't done already? Because there's been three and three coming up, right? So. Um, question to answer because there are, you know, like Carrie Ann said, there are just so many factors that come into play, like life, you know, so you never know where you're going to be, and, and what's beautiful about this is that there is a beginning, middle, and an end, but sure, I am I love Kevin, I love his work, I love, you know, the fact that there will be three new stories next year. Yeah, and never say never, you never know. You never know. But even if you weren't in it, do you want to see a certain fairy tale being told? Oh, a, a specific one? Yeah. Um, you know. <laughs> Little Mermaid. <laughs> Dark Little Mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> that could be. What? what was your favorite fairy tale growing up? Oh, uh, Snow White. <laughs> I liked um, uh, Hansel and Gretel. 
Yeah. We did that one last Yeah, that was last year. Yeah. Maybe there's a movie coming out now. It's kind yeah, of dark. Just like, just like the idea of it, like children, like like da- it was mm-hmm. dangerous, you know. And I think you know if you look at the psyche of, of the true fairy tales, the grim fairy tales, not the Disney ones, mm-hmm. but the true ones. There's, there's the psyche that the child is working through. I mean, they are a reflection mm-hmm. of you know. It feels like oh my God, we're we're showing our children that, but it is in their inner world. They are children are thinking about like who do they trust mm-hmm. and the big bad wolf and, you know they are processing things that are quite near it, I think, yeah. to the fairy tales there is a lot of dark underlying tones in fairy tales I feel yeah, like, I feel like Robin Hood will, will be part of season 3 if there is yeah. <laughs> maybe that would be cool. but I don't think of those as fairy tales yeah, they, those, are, mean, those are Hollywood stories, aren't they? They're not I guess if you go if you go, de- if you go if you go you know to the know. beginning to, to the to the yeah, origin. Then yeah, probably maybe, not. maybe. Yeah. The time for one more question. What about you? <laughs> are you just videotaping? <laughs> the quiet, they <laughs> That gorgeous smile. Uh, Nashville is known for its big musical background. Would you be up to a musical episode? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she can sing her ass off. I love singing. Yeah. I can't, but I will. <laughs> uh. <laughs> like, yeah, <that's> sure. <laughs> well, we do have some singing in it. Yeah. The girl that plays Ashley. Um, she, um, yeah, no, I'm just looking, I'm just seeing all the pictures that you have. Um, she, um, she sings in the first episode, she's so And so does job. Matt, who plays Jackson. He they sings both, too? Yeah, they're both very musically. I'm the only, the middle child. <laughs> I didn't have time to get her lessons. Oh the other 